All right, guys, so this box is on my list for a few boxes I want to go through before taking the OSCP, um, which is still far out. But let me go ahead and bring up my browser here. So this is Ignite and, or Ignite. <laughs> Ignite, this is Ignite. <laughs> this is Ignite. So here we have the uh, IP address. And I'm just going to take the IP address. Yesterday, I cracked the user flag. I'm still trying to crack, crack the root flag. Um, let's see here. I am connected. And essentially, what you want to do is you want to run your uh, MAP scans, which will, once, once you run that, you'll find that there's a service on port 80. So let me go ahead and open up Chrome. And in fact, you don't really even need to enumerate with, with Nmap, but I will show you my Nmap results from yesterday. So when I ran Nmap, this is what I got. Um, you can see it's pointing to port 80 for Apache. And it looks like there's a service running on there. It's using Apache 2.4.18. Um, it's found a directory called Fuel. Okay, and I run a bunch of MAP scans, about 20 of them using an automated script I have. Uh, I'll share that in another video, but we'll just focus on the box right now. So after doing that, we checked and enumerate all the other ports, port 21, SSH, um, 22 for SSH, um, and all the other ports. Now. I did notice that it may be vulnerable to the CVE during one of the scans. But that's, I think that's for a DOS attack, which we're definitely not trying to do. Uh, and then it enumerates some other files, the home and index. All right. So that's all I got there. So after running MAP, Bring up Chrome, navigate to the website to check it out. And it takes us to Fuel CMS. So Fuel CMS is, uh, I've seen it before on other CTS. It's, it's just vulnerable. <laughs> this version of it is very vulnerable, right? And if we go on Google and we try to find an exploit for it, um, I was looking for one yesterday. They have some on exploit DB. I like this person's. So there's one on GitHub. And you can grab it. This is this is where you'll find it. This is the one I used yesterday. Uh, this one's on Ruby. Okay. Actually, I don't believe this is the one I used. Because that's Ruby. I was using one that's uh, it's gonna be a Python exploit. Grab. There we go. I think this one might be it. Here's the Python one. There's one that's better than that. Let me um let me see if I can pull it up. I think it's on my notes. It's the one I currently have on my computer. Oh, I see. I found it. It's gonna be. Here we go, found it. So if you follow this link here, I'll probably provide this in the description. Uh, this is a script you're going to want to use. Um, and if you go, if you click here, It'll show you how to use it, just very easy. You just make the script executable, provide the IP address, and boom, you're in. And then once you're in, uh, you can make a more stable shell, a reverse shell. I'll show you how to do that, because I've got to do it anyways. So once you download that, you just um, open it up. I have it here, right here. 
So I'm going to run this script here. For one of these videos in the future, I got to like pretend to be like Bob Ross. <laughs> While I'm, while I'm running these scans, we're just going to run a happy little scan. Oh, boy. you got to have fun with this because sometimes this gets kind of boring, especially when you're enumerating. All right. So let me run my scan here. So I've already made my executable, but you would do chamad plus x fuel. Right, you'll run that. I already ran that, so it's already executable. Um, then you'd go through here. Run the name of the script, followed by the IP address of your target. All right. And I believe it's provide the port to. No, I think you're good. Just run it. You're in. That's it. That's it. You are in. So if I do ls, it will show me the directory. Now the thing is, we're in. Um, I think we're using the www uh, user, and so we can't really navigate freely, right? We're kind of limited as to where we can go. So what we're gonna want to do is we're going to want to copy shell me, paste that in. And the shell me is just going to get you a reverse shell, a more stable reverse shell. So I'll start up netcat. Netcat's Owen. Run shell me. Provide the IP and port. So it's going to be the same IP. Or actually, it's going to be our IP and port. So it's going to um, essentially. Finish typing this out. It's going to have that reverse shell connect to our IP address here. Selection. Okay. And then port for the reverse shell, I think it's one, two, three, four. Let me double check that. Yep, yeah, it is. Okay, cool. So you provide port colon. Um, I mean, IP colon port, boom, and then you're in, you're in. All right, next, uh, we're going to want to make a more stabilized shell. So I'm going to run a command here that will get me a stable Python shell here, I'm using Python to give me a stable shell. All right, so let me go ahead and paste this in, run that. And now we have a more stable shell. So now I'm going to cd, cd back, cd, cd. And I'm pretty sure I could cd, root. there we go, ls. All right, so now we're in cd root. And from here, we can go to the home directory. And we see we have www-data. We'll go ahead and cd into that directory because that's our user. And we have our flag there. So this is the user flag. We're in. All right, cool. So now I'm going to go ahead and go back a few directories and I'm cd into temp. And we see inside temp, we don't really have much. But what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to transfer linpeas over. So from my computer, I'm going to run locate linpeas because I'm pretty sure I already have it. You, if you don't, guys, just get it from GitHub. Plenty of repositories. When you're looking for it, just make sure that you're looking for the repository that's got the most downloads mostly uh, the one that says MIT next to it. All right. All right, and I have one here. It's called, it's under transfer. So I know that's legit because I always use that one for transfer. All right. I'm gonna open up another folder here. Drop that in. 
go to here and it's stash right there. Okay, I'm gonna open terminal, Python 3, start my web server here. I can transfer that over, come over here. And yesterday I tried running wget, but I don't think it went through. Try it again, I'll try it again. Maybe I did something wrong. wget. And go to one of my first directories here. It's the IP address there. So next I'll put my IP address over here, paste that in. And supply the port 8000. Name of the file. Let me just make sure I'm running this correctly. Yeah, that should run. So now if I run this, it is getting the file. Perfect. LS, I think yesterday, because I didn't run it from the temp directory, so that's probably why it, it didn't work. But um, let's go ahead and make this executable. All right, so it's executable. We'll go ahead and run Limpies. Oh, sweet, it's running. Okay, and while that's running, um, we can just do some manual enumeration here. So from what we've gathered so far, uh, we do know what version of Apache it's running. That may be helpful. And we know it's running fuel 1.4. So let me see if I can find any fuel 1.4 privilege escalations. All right, and I'll pause it while it's doing its scan. All right, guys, so I figured this one out. I actually had to uh, look at the write-up, and this one, I don't know why I didn't get this one, honestly. So if you go to the application configuration for Fuel CMS, you'll notice that there's a database configuration here, and if you cat it out, you will see the password. So let's see here, and this is what I ran. I ran uh, this command to change to directory. And then I ran another command here to cat out. I think it was this one. Yeah, I ran this one to cat out the database.php. And when you do that, you will see the password here. Now, the thing is, Linpeace did catch up on this, and this was something I annotated on my notes, but I didn't think to ch change user to root and try this. And every time I try to um, run a script that required root or sudo, um, one thing I realized was I was trying to put this password in, and I actually did try this password in, in different accounts, but I didn't try it as root. So if you try it as root, you will be logged in as root. So now that we're in as root, we can go to the flag. 
And I'll just cd to the root directory and cd root. And we will ls that and cat the root flag. Awesome. So now we got the root flag. I thought this one might have required some type of kernel exploit because when I ran Linux, uh, when I ran LinPs, LinPs did annotate. There was 94% chance of a kernel exploit. And um, I tried that one, it didn't work. Um, tried my numeral, normal enumeration, no cron jobs, none of that. And if I scroll down here. If, if you scroll down, you'll see that there was the password. It did show the password. Um, let me go down all the way to the bottom. Hold up so much information. Yeah, so this last portion right here, this is where it's uh, trying to see if there's passwords. And scroll up. It searched a PHP config file. It shows there. What it didn't show was user, so it didn't show the user. So you still have to do your enumeration. So note to self in the future, if you see this, check out where that PHP file is located. In this case, it didn't provide me a location. I think it provides it down here, maybe. Um, let's see, does it mention PHP config on there? I don't think it does. Yeah. Well, note to self, I would check the config of the actual application in the future. So this is fuel CMS. I'd probably do a um, check on that. And I'm going to put this in my master notes so that next time I don't run into this issue. But um, I was throwing kernel exploits at it, thinking that might have gotten me the ability to escalate privileges, also GTF bins. I was checking out the, uh, the SUIDs. And there was one SUID that almost worked. Um, if I can recall, I believe it's this one here. It would have worked if I knew the actual username, password, but I did not. So. Anyhow, there's the root flag. All right, guys, so check in the box. We are done with this one. This one is complete. Here we go. I am going to highlight that. Default So I just put a summary of what that box entailed. And that'll be that. All right, thanks guys for watching. Danny out.